welcome to another episode of Reminiscences, uh, which is a program where we look at uh, the life of our elder statesmen uh, to learn from them, from their experiences. Uh, and today, I have the special privilege to be speaking in his in a home to Al-Haji Muhammad Abu Bakr Dam Musa, who many of us will remember, was Speaker of Kaduna State House of Assembly in the Second Republic. And he went on to become the Deputy Senate President. Uh, he's a lawyer by training and practiced uh, law for many years and is now retired and living in his hometown of Kasina. Uh, thank you, sir, for the opportunity to speak to you. Thank you very much for giving me this uh, rare privilege to be recorded in history once more, uh, to say from my words, from my mouth, what had, had happened during this almost 80 years of my existence. So let me start by an episode early in your life, which was that uh, you had a problem at school and you were rusticated, stopped from schooling, which, which is a shock for, uh, for a young man of that. What, what happened? Why? Well, it's by divine uh, design. I was here in Kazana Teachers Grocery College. So, uh, an accident happened that some people went to town and the head boy wrote their names. So, I just happened to plead with the head boy to allow them to have a second chance, he refused. So then, uh, certainly this uh, angered me, say, but you are not a responsible leader. How can over this small thing, can you report these people to the school authority? So, uh, this thing degenerated and uh, uh, he was almost beaten by angry on Lucas students and the following morning we were reported uh, to the school authority. Well there was a teacher called Adamu Mutumbiu. He witnessed what happened and we were reported to the school authority in the morning. That was uh, Aliu Dogondaji. He was a teacher in charge of grocery section. So in the morning assembly, they said we should be punished. We should be given uh, five lashes. I said, for what? <laughs> They said we should also, we should obey before asking. So I just said okay. So we obeyed. We were given five lashes each. The teachers were about to go. I said no. This was not the promise which you made. You said after you punish us, you give us the reason. Now you are going. You don't give us the reason. 
So really the thing become rowdy mm. when they are going. Unfortunately, you know, that's why I say this is de- destiny. Mm. Some students starting to storm us, uh, the teachers. Well, that was it. That is the first episode. And then we are reported to the Amy Abkazana, uh, Al Haj Usman Nagogo. Then the whole Emirate Council was summoned. We went to the sec- uh, grade two section early in the morning. All important people, councillors, portfolio councillors, were all assembled. Because then there was only one school in Katsina, isn't it? Yes. Uh, no, there was a provincial secondary school. Okay. There was a provincial secondary school and also teachers', teachers. college. Mm. Yes. Two. Two. So they said uh, we misbehave. Therefore, we should be punished and then we will be expelled from the school. See, okay. So we are also given lashes. Again? Yes, the Emir of Kazuna, Alhaji Osman Nogogo, was around. We all received a punishment and they were told, you are expelled. Expelled from the school? From the school. Mm. And nobody should employ you. My senior brother, who happened also to be a student there, I just went to the dormitory to pick my box to go to the town. He came to try to accompany me. The school said, no, I should not, he should not go. So he was crying. I said to him, his name is Idris. I said, look, Idris, if it is the wish of Allah that I will become somebody, nobody can stop me from becoming somebody. So don't cry. I, I just took my wooden box and went into the tower. And indeed, uh, Alaji Isaketa, then the Minister of, Education. Minister of Education, intervened. And you finished your secondary school uh, in Bidda. Uh, teacher's College. Teacher's College in Bidda. Yes, in Bidda. So, so ca- can you tell us about the Bidda experience? A Kasina boy then going to Bidda. It is to not school in secondary school. It is not easy. Because b- before then, I had never been to Kaduna. You can imagine a Katsina boy going to be there. But the Nupe and Katsina was uh, <laughs> yes. are, are, are good friends. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, then late Isaketa was the Minister of Education. He said, no, you should not uh, expel these young people. You don't know what God has destined they will become. So they should be readmitted. They insisted no. Uh, a compromise was reached that we should be dispersed. So I was sent to Bidda. Rufa Imachika was sent to Wudil. My Nasser Bugaje was sent to Bauchi. Ali Musawa was sent to Maru. So all this. So how was your experience in Bida? Well, I mean, in the end, despite the strangeness, we, we managed to finish uh, the school? Then? I managed to finish. But you know, uh, 
uh, it is my nature. Really, if I see anything which is wrong and unjust, mm. I will speak, even as young as I was. Mm. So, in Bidda, I encounter so many problems mm. because of my attitude. Mm. Finally, I managed to finish, but of course, because of my attitude towards constituted authority, I, I was referred in teaching practice. Mm. Just to teach. Mm. They said I didn't pass. So I said, okay. So I was posted in 1962 to Sapana Elementary School as a teacher. I was there. Then there was this politics. NPC and NAPU, UMBC. By nature, I would have been Naples supporter. But because my father happened to be a village head, they would have removed him. Mm. So I just managed to remain in the NPC. But then I am always at logo head with other senior members of the party. How come you left uh, teaching? I know you are, as you said, you are a teacher, you became a headmaster, but then you suddenly abruptly left and went and studied law, which um, for those times uh, is a bit of a uh, unusual uh, career move. Well, as I told you, and I very strongly believe that it is the work of Allah, because uh, as you rightly said, a grisery teacher to become a legal practitioner is a long job, more especially in a house setting. So, but that's what God has destined. But really, it needs somebody who is determined, uh, who really would not accept uh, no as an answer. Mm. I suffered. Mm. I, was, I was not paid mm. my salary. Instead, for two years, when I was in grade two, my colleagues from Sokoto, Zalia, Birninkebi, all they were given their salaries. But we people in Katsuna here, they didn't give us salary. Mm. We are only given nine uh, naira per month as uh, allowance. That what kept me for two years. I finished, I was successful. I went to Advanced Teachers College Zaria. Uh, then uh, there was this advertisement for uh, Bayero College Kano for those who want to have advanced level. I applied. I was called. We, I took exam. I passed. Then I chose to to go to uh, read law at Zalia Institute of Administration. That is where I was there for three years. Even there, some of our colleagues were well, having salary, but for us, it was only an allowance. So I said, nothing will deter me from becoming a lawyer by God's grace.
And as a lawyer, sir, you are like, uh, I believe you started as a usual government lawyer. Yes, public uh, state council. Uh, state council. Yes. But then you quickly move into private practice, which also was a bit unusual for your time. Uh, how long were you in private practice and why, why did you leave? Because it seems uh, well, to be good practice. You know, in, in government work, uh, if you are not a serious person, if you are somebody who has no mission in life, you remain there. When promotion comes, they promote you. So, but for me, I have a mission. So I just felt I could not remain in the government service. What was your mission? What was driving you? You know, I told you, even as a young man, I hate injustice. So, as God would have it, for him to help me to fight injustice, I became a lawyer. So, as a government lawyer, I cannot do much. Because, certainly, I have to do what the government like. So that was in 1977, this commission of inquiry of Ikara local government. The lawyer who the councillors took, you know, he came from, he was coming from Kaduna. Really the man, really he was not doing anything but he has everything to himself. I said, no, I cannot remain in this job. Mm -hmm. So in 1977, oh, 78 years, I resigned. They did all they can to persuade me to continue. I said, no. Even then, I didn't have a house in Kaduna. So I didn't consult my relatives because I have made up my mind. I have a wife and a three children. So, but I didn't consult anybody. I just read I read somewhere that also you were impressed with the first uh, fees you got as a private lawyer. One thousand dollars. Yes. It's, it's more than the salary that you and, and, and I mean so one of the That was not what because this money hmm. is when I left. Yes. Okay. It it is in the process that I was brief no. to conduct a, a case which I did, which lasted not more than 10 minutes, mm -hmm. and uh, I was successful, and I was paid ten, uh, 1,000 naira. And I had a salary of 336 naira per month. Mm -hmm. So in just under 30 minutes, I had 1,000 1, naira. So that's why I was trying to imply that was not was money not one of the motivations no, not driving at all. Where I started no, not at all. Because I didn't get I didn't get the money before I left. It was after I left that I got the money. So my motivation really is to see that I help the, the downtrodden. That's why I didn't make much money. All my practices really is for the, for the underprivileged. How long did you stay in private practice? Well, I was called to the bar in 1976, in 1978. Uh, I left the government in 1978, and I started practice, and I was in practice up to 2000. 2000 and uh, I think during the 
region of Okosanju. Mm. So it was that period I was in the private practice. Mm. Then after that, I feel I have to call it a quit. I said, uh, as a Muslim, as a houseman, I cannot remain in this practice when I am getting old. How, at what age was that when you left? Were you, were you 70? No, I was not 70. Not yet 70. Not yet 70. Tell us about your transition from lawyer into politician. It was not really any transition because always I like politics. That's why when I was a grade 3 teacher, uh, posted to Safana in 1962, I was very active in NPC affairs. So, therefore, it was really not that I want. Naturally, I want to see I help my people. That is my desire in, in life. Because as a speaker of the Kaduna State House Assembly, I had never received a quabo as an allowance. And I had never ordered for uh, my house to be punished. The properties which Abu Gida left in that house was the property which I used as a speaker up to uh, 1983. We all remember your tenure speaker because there were a few interesting moments, one of which was the impeachment saga, uh, which removed uh, Hezbollah and Musa. There are still debates, you know, what happened, was it motivated? Of course, it's MPA, MPN versus PRP. But a lot of people also saw other subtexts, Katsina versus Zaria, you know. So really what happened? Why, why was it necessary to remove a national argument? Well, in the first place, really, I had never allowed myself to be used. I always want to be myself. So, it is not true that uh, late Balaram Musa was removed because he refused to cooperate with the NPN. No. He was removed because really he didn't understand what politics is all about. Baralev, I, I concede, Balara Bumbumsa is honest. So, so too, I had never, I had never, there were instances when members wanted to do something wrong. And I told them that one, today we are somebody. But I can assure you, if we breach this trust which God has given us, we will be shame when we are nobody. And it happened to those people who insisted that uh, Abba Musa should give us uh, money for us to increase his uh, budget. Just 500,000 Naira. 500, 500. This is, this is what, they, they, what they call the padding, right? Yes. You add more to the budget so uh, that the members can get. Yes. You are against it. I, I see it categorically. And the person who spearheaded it, when he brought the money, I abused him. I said he should get away from me. So when the commission of inquiry was set up, I was called. What is this money? I said, well, uh, let us call Abashakaradwa. 
la tasia ya farkin aba shekara ta wake he said no he do not take the money from me he confirmed he gave it to you but refused yes so he said they said i should go and it is on record that this constituency allows which now some people are turning into a, a gold mine I was given, it was provided in the budget, I was given the money. I refused to take it. I told the accountant to take it back to the treasury and bring the receipt to me. The receipt are uh, up to this day with me that I do not take the money. Why were you arrested? Couldn't you use the money for your the, the the people I never gave them money before they elect me. I it is too immoral for me to take money and they, they are drinking water from the ponds like, like animals. I said I can't I can't do so. So you could have used the money to build uh, no infrastructure. That is not my, my duty. Mm. That is not my duty. I, I it is better for if I have the money to do so. But to use that money, I say no. So what really happened between you and Valerius? We are good friends. You are two honest people. We are, we are, we are good friends. Mm -hmm. Because when there was school, we were all taken to, to Lagos. We were put in the, in the Umar room, myself and the Bulare Musa. So we slept this Victoria Island. Mm -hmm. we, we slept, uh, we spent a day. The following day, we were brought out. I was given a uh, permit by this uh, uh, forgotten his name. Hello, That I should go. I say, well, I don't have money and I don't know anybody in Lagos. I will wait since you are taking these people back to Lagos. Then we will go back again. So I slept the following day. We were all brought to Kazakhstan. So you were released quickly after I was the, released. After the coup. Yes. But I still want to go back to the impeachment. Yes. It's, it's, it's a historic moment. It's the first time in Nigeria. We want to understand what, what happened. And you are in the best position to explain. I told you. And anybody who knows Muhammad knows he is not a student of anybody. That's why in life, in the first thing is I believe in Allah. It is Allah. That's why on the day I became the speaker of Kazi. Kaduna State House Assembly. I wrote in my diary. I said, look, it's an irony. What I told my senior brother mm. that I'm going, mm. he should not cry. Mm. If God says I will be somebody, I will. Now the Emir of Kasana who expelled me from the school is alive and today I am the speaker. Mm. It is not my father. Mm. My father was a village head. Mm. So he could not have made me. It is only God. Mm. So for Mama, really uh, it is a struggle. So so uh, you said that uh, Malari Musa didn't understand politics. Mm. Was it that was it they really were led to his uh, troubles? And if, if so, how? 
politics, whatever it is, is about compromise. There are certain issues which, even for the sake of peace, you have to have a compromise. But for Balaraba Musa, it is law. So that's why the PRP uh, said set up a commission of uh, a committee by S.G. Ukoku. He said there should be cooperation between NP and, and uh, PRP. But Balarabi said over his dead body, he did not agree. Okay. The unfortunate thing, you know, this 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 Yoruba people, if you are not careful, they will just mislead you. It is this Jack and De Patrebu who mislead Balaraba Musa to believe that he can work as a governor without the cooperation of the House of Assembly. While in their own case, they give their members all they, they wanted. So this is a problem. What was your relationship like with another PRP seller who is from Katsina? Actually, yeah, who is uh, from uh, near uh, the Musa, uh, uh, I'm talking about Musa Balaam, so what was, what, what role did you see him playing in that? <laughs> well, you know, I, I pity also Dr. Balaam Usman. He, he was in the terrain which he did not understand. So, it is not difficult, really, you know, to dribble him, to confuse him. He equate politics with plenty of uh, books knowledge. Well, yes, book knowledge will help you, but also if you know really what politics is all about. So, Dr. Bala is full of knowledge. He underrated the NPN members who are in the house. Why? Because many of them did not go to school. But all these people who did not go to school, they were successful in life. They were representing their people. And they, they are very wealthy. And you know, in those days, you just, you just cannot steal money for a long time and they get away with it. So all their money, they made it, it in, in a hard way. Nobody, none of them, <coughs> sorry, was working in the government. So it's by dint of hard work, they became rich and their people elected them. So Dr. Balasim otherwise. So that's why we are always at loggerhead. You know, when we wanted to confuse him, like there was a situation, we, when we started this impeachment, uh, he wanted to create a problem for us. I said, you know, what we should do for this uh, Bala? Let us write a letter. I, I know I didn't have the power, but I want to confuse him. I, I wrote a letter that I have dismissed him from the uh, secretary to the state government. As a speaker, you wrote to, to, to dismiss it. Yes. yes. But I know I didn't have the power, but I have a purpose, and I achieve my purpose. 
I want just to confuse him. So he started abusing me, writing this and this. So before he can come down, we have already finished our impeachment. Because he was trying to save his body. So he is not after after Abad Arabi. So before he knows it, we have finished our impeachment. So you see people who, you know, that's why after the impeachment, I was invited to Ibadan by OIO. I was there. there were, yes, OIO State Radio. Okay. They were they were invite they were interviewing me all hostile pressmen except uh, the this newspaper owned by Abiola. Concord. Concord. It was the only paper then by then which was uh some perception to the NBN. NBN, yes. So all others were hostile. So we uh, they wanted to soon after the impeachment they invited me for six hours they were interviewing me so I was telling them you see your problem is that you think you know so much but we more especially Hausa Plani, we have our own culture, we have our own tradition. We are humble. That's why you, when you are fighting with us, we don't show you the real people we are. We just allow you to use your weapons, and then the last one will come and uh, finish finish you. So we are not stupid people. How if we are stupid? Mo most of the people, the uh, ministers, parliamentarians, most of them were primary school leavers. But they were discharging from the north. From the north. Mm -hmm. But they are just starting their responsibility creditably. Do you see do you see that the, the way people <coughs> saw the impeachment then? There is a Kasuna angle. One by removing Madam Malarabi, you are having a Kasuna man to be governor, Alaji Abu Musari. Two, also within that period, the issue of the Amy Show of Kasuna came up. And here you are, a Kasuna speaker of the assembly being very much involved in these two separate developments. Really, Kazana man, Ozaria man, really did not arise. You know, the advantage we had in the Kaduna Sriho Assembly is really the members, they believe in me. So, uh, whatever you go and tell them, they come, they verify, they, they will find it is, it is not true. So we, are, we live in harmony. So the question of somebody uh, uh, influencing me, I had never been to the Emir. Mm -hmm. So the question was the Emir to influence me, or even now later, really, Wallahi, does not arise. Me, I was just, just doing what I was up, uh, elected to do. But the matter came to you, is sensitive from the state, yes. How yes. did you handle it? With all honesty. With all honesty, that's why, up to date, I can look at the face of anybody and say this is the, the truth. And if you have anything contrary, let me show.
No. In any case, I don't think the state assembly has the power to appoint or to recommend a leader. No. Did you go to, did you read the or, or No, you, you know, <laughs> the, you know, when you are underrated, mm. you can perform wonders. Mm. We, we believe with the Emir there, mm. we had a problem. I said to myself, if we allow this man, he will mess up. Mm. So we do we don't we have power to amend any law we have. So we change the law. We change the law to suit the circumstances. So Banarami did not agree. We rejected the law. We passed it with two third majority. But you are, are usurping his power. No. To appoint him. No. He went to court. And the court did not declare our amendment illegal. Mm. So it's legal. So in effect, you appointed the Indian. No. You see, you put a moral issue mm. into this political thing. Really, when you are in politics, it's like an international relation. Is that any permanent friend? Is permanent interest? So now we see what will give our party advantage. We take it. They, these people, they underrated us before they know. Well, so. so the highlight of your political career was when you became deputy senate president, even if though it's for a few months. How did that come about? From, from the state assembly, you now moved to the center and became a deputy senate president. I told you, it's by Alice Grace. It is all there in my diary. It is all there in my diary. I believe in God. I believe only God that can do and undo. He has done it to me. A grocery teacher, becoming the future president of the Senate, and also a lawyer. It is God. And now you are retired? Yes. You have a large family? Three wives, I believe. Yes. How easy is it to manage you know, this retirement and this economic situation? I find it very, very comfortable. You know, even as somebody in elementary school, mm. I know how to trade, how to buy things and sell. I never allowed myself to be defeated by a sad situation. After the military coup, I wrote in my diary, okay, mama, now you are no longer the future president of the Senate. It was God who gave you. He took it away from you. Now are you going to just be worrying yourself because you are no longer the future president? Mama, you should not. You should just go and get your, your next meal. So I took up my gown, wig and gown, and went back to court. And also, I started trading. Even I was, I was making this task of wig up. That's what we get that. Okay, Ramas? Yes. yes. So there is no, there is no trade in which this cooker, mm -hmm. this anything, mm -hmm. uh, by a wood, mm -hmm. I bought uh, a, a lorry mm -hmm. which go to the forest to make, to take by a wood. Mm -hmm. And I will heave it in one place until in the, in, in the rainy season. Mm -hmm. 
mm. when it is very expensive, then I would sell it. So I know how to make money. God gave me that. Believe me, you can go and check. I had never, I had never in my life executed a contract. Go and ask any ministry in Katsina. I had never gone to any ministry in Katsina. Are you patronized by the government? Do they call you for... No, I don't, I don't care. I ah, no. In where I think my services are needed and I will be useful, if I am called, I will run down with my advice. But that's all. I am not a contractor and I am not looking for, for employment. That is the position. I read somewhere and you said actually you don't even have time to visit friends. You are, maybe there are so few around now and you are so fully occupied. So yeah. it looks like a very isolated life. Only no, 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 no. Hmm. It's not isolated life. I have something useful to it. Uh, before I even I joined politics, I had large farms. After the, the after the the military coup, I continued with my farming and also my pro profession, legal profession, and also trading. So now there is no need as for me at this age, eighty to have a friend to come and uh, speak with him. For what? <laughs> so how do you spend your day? Very you simple. Can... Very simple. Uh, Sometimes I wake up by say three. I see my prayers for one or two hours. Then when I when it is uh, time to pray, I will pray. That's After the morning prayer. Morning prayer. prayer. Yeah. Then I will go back to sleep. I will wake up, say around nine. Then I will come and take my tea. And then subsequently I will take my breakfast. I have a television. My favorite uh, station is Sonda TV. So I tune it. I see many, many of the programs. Mm -hmm. And also I tune to the NTA24, Al Jazeera, and what have you. And also I buy newspapers, more especially your newspaper. So this is the time, this is how I spend my life. Do I need somebody really to... I also, I have, I have 24 children. I take care of their problems. So I don't have time really to, to attend to anybody. But don't, don't people come to you? They, after all to, they do. To request things and no, they do. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's un Islam for me to say, I do this, I do this. Mm -hmm. No. They come. So, but for me, I don't have time to go to anybody. And I am contented. You look, you look very healthy for an 80 year old. I don't know, do you do any, do you, are you specific about what you eat and exercise and the usual well, things? For me, it is a belief in Allah. That is the most important thing for me. For me. Because if somebody is, a, is not a believer, he will worry himself so much that he will end up in having a stroke. But for me, whatever comes, I will pray to Almighty Allah 
to help me solve this problem, and he did many times. And I have 24 children. Some of them are lawyers, engineers, doctors, uh, IT ex experts. So they are all in various fields of human endeavor. Does the state of things in Nigeria worry the situation we are in? Very much. Well, why do you think we are in the situation? What is the way out? Well, you know, I cannot refuse to be myself. That's why sometimes the interview I will grant to newspapers will anger more especially Buhari. Because more especially when our people are being killed. I said, but this is not what we, we, we agree with you. Our people are being killed. I said, in, at that time, more than 50 people are in my house. They were, their houses were destroyed, their, their properties burnt. So refugees. Yes, refugees. You know, the irony is that what is happening to, to us is not being even reported, but what is what what Benoit people are not even suffering. They are they are people really who are not ready to help themselves. But for us, we help our brothers. That's why you don't get this uh, refugee camps and what are you in Kazana say. You once uh, this advantage, but the, 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 the town, the people play, they will go to their relatives and the relatives will take good care of them. That, so this really worried me. And that's why we form a, a committee for this. So we, we went everywhere, but we are Grateful to Almighty Allah that now, since uh, getting in good shape. Yeah. Okay. Is there a chance to tell Buhari this or anybody else in government about you know, these uh, concerns and what uh, you should have about? You know, my problem. I don't usually go to somebody in power. But we are very, still we are very good. Uh, I have nothing against Buhari. I respect him. He do respect him. But there's no interaction? No, not much. Because, uh, not much. Thank you, sir, for your very frank and engaging talk. Uh, viewers, uh, I was speaking to Al Haji Muhammad Abu Bakar Gamusa, who is a retired lawyer and who played an active role in the politics of the Second Republic, a speaker of the Kaduna State House of Assembly, Deputy Senate President. Uh, among other uh, responsibilities. Uh, thank you for joining this episode of uh, the Mini Census on Trust TV and see you again.